I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and if you're the sort of person who builds a home automation system, um, I think you probably would also be the sort of person who wants to get smart uh, toys for your kid if you have kids. Um, so I'm, I'm starting to do a new series where I'm going to look at smart kids' toys, um, you know, things that are uh, have a technology embedded in them, take a look at how those work. And I think uh, hopefully this is something that would be appealing for people who are building their own home automation system. Uh, but certainly let me know if this is something that you'd like more of in the comments below. Um, so the first one I'm going to take a look at here is the Lego Duplo engine. So this is a system from Lego. Um, and you can see with Duplo, it's made for smaller kids. Um, so it's got these sort of larger blocks that are probably less of a choking hazard. And it works pretty much uh, from the basic sense like uh, any other kind of model train set, like a Brio or something like that. Um, and you have these basically these track pieces you can put together, form different layouts, um, again, pretty much like a normal model train. Where it differs, though, is that this is actually loaded with quite a lot of technology. Um, and taking a look into some of the specs for it, I was actually surprised by how much is in there. And one of the concepts with this device is that it's meant to teach kids basic coding kinds of concepts, um, loops and if statements and things, um, in addition to being just a fun train set to play with. So this is the core of it. This is the Lego Duplo engine. Um, it's actually fairly pricey. A uh, basic kit with some tracks and things is about $75. Uh, and I'm going to take a look at why that is, because again, this is a fairly uh, high-tech toy overall. Um, so you know, set up, you set up the track, um, and then the piece that I think is probably uh, what makes it more of the sort of stem tie-in are actually these little pieces that go into the track. So this is um, just basically a little piece of ABS printed plastic. Um, you put it in, or uh, formed plastic, you put it into the track, and when the train moves over it, it performs some kind of an action. So in this case, uh, it's going to blow its horn when it passes over this um, little yellow piece that goes in. Um, but the pieces do all kinds of different things. They can reverse the train, they can cause it to take other actions. So and you, you add these to the tracks, it kind of forms almost like a program with loops and if statements and decisions and things like that. And kids can start to experiment with those concepts. Uh, for example, there's a piece you can put in that reverses the train. So you could add multiple ones of those to create uh, essentially an infinite loop. Um, and you can put in different ones that have the train perform different actions. Um, so how is it doing all of these kinds of things and what's actually in this train from a tech perspective? So the first thing is to switch it on. You take a look at the bottom of the Duplo engine and there's just this big green button. And I'll hold that down. And it's going to switch on. And on the back here you can see there's um, this addressable RGB LED. So this can actually be uh, any color in the RGB spectrum. And then you can also see, interestingly, on the bottom, there's this kind of glowing light that also has an RGB type of look to it and another little light next to it or sensor next to it. And I was wondering what this is because it's sort of very prominent in the bottom of the train. And it turns out it's actually a colored light sensor. Uh, so why does this device need a colored light sensor? Well, the way that it's actually um, reading these little pieces in the track, I was sort of wondering about that, because when you look at it, I mean, this doesn't really have much to it. It's just, again, a little piece of, of ABS. Um, I was thinking originally maybe an NFC chip or something to communicate with the train to tell it to perform the actions. Um, it could even be an RFID kind of chip. But again, you know, there's really nothing in here. So it turns out the way the train is actually able to interpret these, I believe, is that it's using this colored light sensor, and as it passes over these uh, different brightly colored pieces in the track, it's actually reading the RGB color of this, and if it detects that it's, for example, the yellow color, then it'll tell the train's uh, logic circuits to go ahead and play a sound effect for a, um, a horn blowing. So it's actually using the colored light sensor and the color of these little track inserts to determine what actions to perform. And where it gets kind of more interesting, though, I think, is um, it actually not only has the colored light sensor, but it also has a depth sensor. And you wonder, why would it have a depth sensor? That's probably this little piece um, right next to the colored light sensor on the bottom. 
And the reason for this is that it's not only wants to know what the color is of these inserts, but also how deep they are in the track. So it's looking for things that are in the track and not under the track. And you can see a great example of why that's important. If I put the track over this yellow piece on my floor here, as the train went over it, it would interpret this as a signal to blow its horn. And that could happen with, you know, a color in your carpet or something like that. So um, again, it's looking not only for the color, but also the depth. And if it sees that this is under the track instead of in the middle of the track, then it won't interpret it as a signal. So, you know, again, pretty, pretty good um, and I think clever technology for a fairly simple uh, kid's toy. Now to actually start it, it actually has a wheel encoder um, in one of these wheels. And as you start to give it a little push, it will detect that and start to move by itself and kind of take off. Um, so it's really easy for kids to start and stop it because you don't have to press a button to get it going. A parent can start it uh, with the button on the bottom, the kid can place it on the track. All they have to do is give it a push. It probably detects that movement, maybe even the speed of the movement um, with the wheel encoder. And then it tells the engine to continue to move forward. Uh, and it switches on the motors in there. And again, with certain pieces in the track, it'll actually reverse and go in the opposite direction as well. Um, some other functionality, and this one was actually pretty impressive to me too, it has a Bluetooth module um, inside of the train. And the reason for that is there's actually an app you can connect with this. And again, you can start to do some of the kind of programming concepts, or you can just use it like a really fancy version of um, an old, older uh, train set where you can actually use your phone or a tablet to control the train and tell it to stop and start, sound its horn. Um, I believe you can even change the color of the RGB LED in the back there. So, you know, again, it's a pretty smart uh, toy for a kid's toy. You are paying a little bit more for that, but it's got this really clever um, system where you can interpret all these track inserts. Presumably, they probably have others they haven't released yet and that kind of thing. Um, you've got the addressable RGB LED. You've got a wheel encoder, which can probably also encode speed and let it know how fast the train's going. So you can dial in a particular speed um, in the app. And it's got that Bluetooth connection to actually be able to connect to the app and allow for remote control. Um, so again, pretty high tech uh, and a great uh, toy for the child of anybody who's into home electronics and uh, home automation. If you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps.